welcome back to LW Pharmacy School channel. I am super excited to be here with you guys. Happy Wednesday. Um, hopefully this week has been great to you. Hopefully this week you have been able to do everything that you said you were going to do. Um, as always, this video is being brought to you by LW Pharmacy School. If we have helped you, if this video has helped you, or if our channel has helped you to be successful and has helped you with your studying, subscribe to our channel, ring the bell for notifications, and give us a thumbs up, okay? We really appreciate that. Let me turn my phone off just so we don't get any type of interruption. Um, because I want to make sure that I am giving you my utmost attention and respect while you are doing your thing. Um, shout out to my new friend in Wyoming. Look, I ain't never even had nobody call me for Wyoming. I got a call today from a friend of mine in Wyoming who is taking her exam. Shout out to you, friend. Sending you positive vibes um, and all, you know, positivity to go your way. Hope you pass. Keep you posted. You the best. I got another friend in Samoa uh, who reached out to me. So I'm so glad that you guys are watching me all over the country, all over the world. And I'm just glad that you have allowed me to be a part of your success journey. We're going to go ahead and jump into it. LW Pharmacy School, you can find us online at www.lwpschool.com for information on how to register for our 15-week course or even to be a part of our two-day uh, past seminar here in Houston, Texas. You can call me 903 295 5933 extension 101 or you can simply text the word pass p-a-s-s -S, to 74121 to uh, register and get some information okay this course today is going to be brought to you by lw pharmacy school and this is going to be geared for my friends who are trying to pass that EXPPT exam a lot of you all are trying to pass that exam and so I'm here to help you. Like I'm always here to help you to make sure that you'll be the best you that you could possibly be. Okay. So uh EXCPT exam study takers as well as PTCB exam takers, this is for you too. Um, but I did this on purpose for my friends who are studying for the EXCPT exam. Um, that particular exam is going to focus a lot on insurance billing. It's also going to focus a lot on pharmacology. Uh, so you want to make sure you are prepared. The first question we have today says Mary Williams is having a prescription filled for am amadronate. I cannot say that, but I know what it does. Uh, she is the card holder on her prescription plan. Which patient code should the pharmacy technician input? Is it zero? Is it one? Is it two? Is it three? Okay. She is the plan holder. And that means that she is the insurance holder. So because of that, she is A, which is zero. Okay. Now I'm going to be honest with you. The answer here is zero, but you will notice that some insurance companies will note or will list the uh, plan holder as one. So if you pick one, that's not completely wrong um, because some plans do do it differently. But in regards to this particular insurance, it's going to be zero. Um, and you'll see that here. OK, so you'll see the child listed as one, the and, uh, child two, and then child three, uh, the spouse is one and the employer is going to be zero. OK, so. Um, it can be a little different. Um, this one says child one, but ultimately the spouse would be one, the child would be the second one, the third, the second child would be the third, the, so on and so forth. And the employee, which is Mary, would be zero. Don't let this confuse you. Um, it was what I could find to add to our PowerPoint, because you know I'm very visual and I like to make sure that you have something to look at. Um, and so with that being said, you know, don't allow that to confuse you at all or to make you feel like, okay, that even right. Okay. Um, as I mentioned, some other card holders will have the employee listed as one. So if that's the case, the subscriber would be one and then everybody else will follow in line behind them. Okay. And that's just from experience inside the pharmacy. Now the book won't necessarily teach you that, but experience will teach you things that books won't. Okay, don't we all know that? Yes, we do. 
DAW code, check this out. So this is gonna be again an insurance type of question. A physician has written a prescription for Glucovich and has authorized the generic to be dispensed. The patient is requesting the brand name to be dispensed. Which DAW code should the pharmacy technician input? Now you'll notice I have these DAW codes over here to the right because I want you to take a picture. Yes, take a picture of this uh, or write this down so you can begin to familiarize yourself with the actual codes and what they stand for. Uh, in regards to this, the patient is requesting the brand name to be dispensed. Okay, and so it says substitution allowed patient requested product. Um, substitution not allowed by provider, substitution allowed pharmacist selected it, substitution allowed generic drug not in stock, substitution allowed brand drug dispensed as generic, or we override it. That means that you know you can go inside the pharmacy or inside the software and actually do an override. Uh, substitution not allowed brand drug mandated by law, substitution allowed generic drug not available in the marketplace for something other than those options. This particular answer is going to be B, which is DAW code 2, and that is uh, the substitution is allowed, however, the patient requested it to be dispensed as a brand, um, and because of that, we do give the patient what they want um, in this particular you know, scenario, and so we would list that. One of the ways that you can remember these codes is zero is no product indicated right so that means that the doctor didn't say anything anything like that so we just did zero uh one through five is going to be for substitutions right so substitution um well i'm sorry number one is substitution not allowed by the provider so who would be the provider is that going to be the insurance company is that going to be the doctor is that going to be the patient or the um or is that going to be the pharmacist, right? Uh, and then it says substitution allowed patient requested the product. Okay, substitution allowed pharmacist selected the product. So the provider in this instance will be the doctor, substitution not allowed by the provider, which is the person who provided the prescription. Oh, you smart, you knew that already. Um, and so because of that, um, the number one is going to be where, you know, whatever the doctor requests, if the doctor requests the brand name, it's going to be a DAW1. If the doctor, you know, does not matter or doesn't really have a preference, um, then, uh-oh, then it would be, you know, two through, um, two through five, okay? And then six would be override, you know, and then seven would be substitution not allowed, brand drug, mandated by law. That's kind of hardly ever, you, you'll hardly ever see that. Uh, but you do want to know zero through five. You want to know exactly what those mean. So please remember that. Okay, don't forget that. Uh, you will notice too that this first Monday or this second Monday, I did not do a crash course like I always do because we're having our seminar here in Houston and I'm saving up all of my juices that I'm going to be teaching. Look, my mouth got watery. I'm saving up all of my information to give to you in person. February 21st and February 22nd, we are hosting a two-day pass seminar here in Houston, Texas. You come here to Houston, I'm going to be over by the Hobby Airport area uh, delivering this awesome information to you all for you all to study and to pass the exam when you take it. I'm also inviting my friends who are experts in pharmacy uh, and operate as pharmacy technicians. I mean, I got some who own their own pharmacy that are tech. And then I got some who are who own their own IV certification school. They're showing up, okay? And then I got some friends who teach IV certification and they showing up. Um, I got some friends who work at closed door, mail order pharmacies, compounded pharmacies. Look, I got friends, okay? When I tell you I got friends and they're gonna be in the building, if you wanna be, you know, in a circle where you can grow and where you can learn information and where the sky is not the limit, but the beginning, then you wanna be in the place, okay? That seminar, two-day pass seminar to find out information and to learn how you can actually register and to be a part of this awesome, awesome, awesome event. I want you to text the word PASS, that's P-A-S-S, -S, PASS, to 74121, okay? Look, y'all know we've been working together for months on months on months. 
It's time for you to take this test and pass it. Let me tell you something about the month of February. February is the time for you to do some things in the creation that you've never done before in order to set the, the tone for 2020. Let me bag it up because somebody didn't catch that. I'm going to say this again for the people in the back. If you want to know where you headed this year, the time to do something is right now, okay? So if you want to figure out, okay, what am I going to be in 2020? How good 2020 going to be to me? You need to make an a point, a point. You need to make it a requirement to be at this two-day pass seminar in H-Town, okay? We have a great time in Houston. If you don't know about Houston, you better look us up. We on the map, okay? Again, text the word PASS, P-A-S-S. -S. 74121. Text the word PASS, P A S S, to 74121 so you can register and reserve your spot so you can be in the place to be, okay? Compounding. When, when must personal protective equipment be worn by handling hazardous drugs? When is it necessary to have PPE? Receiving hazardous drug, compounding hazardous drug, or transporting hazardous drug, or would you say all of the above? The correct answer is D, all of the above. Personal protective equipment includes, because I've had some people say, well, Lindsay, what is personal protective equipment? That's going to be eye protection, gloves, a mask, a gown to go over your body. Sterile technique is very vital uh, when you are compounding sterile equipment or sterile you know, products as well as hazardous drugs because you want to make sure that you do not transfer any of that stuff onto you. Um, you'll see that she is all, you know, covered up. She doesn't have her gown on, but she does have on her scrubs and she's getting ready to do some compounding. Okay, reconstituting. A pharmacy technician is reconstituting a powder form uh, vial. Sorry, a powder from a vial. Which type of needle should be used? So let me paint the picture for you. Inside of the vial, there's powder. A pharmacy tech is reconstituting a powder from a vial. Which type of needle should be used? Should be used? Is it a filter needle? Is it a filter straw? Or is it a dented needle or a transfer straw? Or a transfer needle? I don't know what it is today. I'm just like mixing up my words. I can't, you know what it is? I'm excited. I'm excited to be here with you. I'm excited to have the opportunity to be a part of your success journey. Um, if you pick D as your answer, you are on track. You like doing your thing today. You're super smart. Um, a vented needle should be used in reconstituting powder from a volume, okay? And you'll see here, vented needles are used primarily for reconstituting a powder medication. You can thank me later. You can thank me later, okay? Sterile compounding. How much air should be drawn into a syringe prior to withdrawing solutions from a vial? How much air should be drawn into a syringe prior to withdrawing solution from a vial? Is it 10% less than the amount being drawn? Is it 10% more than the amount being drawn? Is it the same amount as being drawn? Or is it uh, inside of the manufacturer's label? Okay. When you are doing this sterile compounding, and again, I got friends who are going to show you this when you come. Um, when you are doing this sterile compounding, you are going to make sure that whatever air you put inside of your syringe matches the amount of liquid that you need to withdraw from that volume, okay? So if you hit 10% less, you're not going to get as much as you need. If you hit 10% more, you're going to get too much. If you put the same amount in that you want to get out, you're going to be successful. See, it's just like life. If you put something in it, you can get something out of it. I can't go to my credit union and say, hey, I want to withdraw $20 if I don't have $20 in. If I didn't put 20 in, I can't get 20 out. But some people live their life where they want to get something for nothing. Life doesn't work like that and neither does sterile compounding. What you put in is what you get out. So if you pick C, you on point and that means that you know what you're doing. Risk evaluation and mitigation strategies. 
Okay, this is something new. Now, this is for this PTCB people. EXCPT, I haven't heard about this being on your exam, but I know for a fact, PTCB 2020, they coming for us, and this is on the exam. It says, which component of a risk evaluation and mitigation strategy, REMS, is a Dear Healthcare Provider Letter? Dear Healthcare Provider Letter. Is it a communication plan? Is it elements to assure safe use? implementation system, medication guides, and or a patient package insert. That would be B, a dear healthcare provider letter is a component to ensure safe use, okay? It is used to ensure the safe use. So if you pick B, then your answer is correct. If you pick A, I can see how you could have gotten a little tricked up here, because we know that in the letter you're going to communicate. However, when it says, one of the other things I want you to look at too is it says risk evaluation. So when we, if something is risky, we want to try to prevent the risk. And the opposite of risk is safe, right? Um, and when we're sending this or when they're sending this letter out to the provider, they want to assure that they are using, you know, everything in a safe manner. The correct answer is B. So hopefully you pick B. Prescription information. Prescription information. Okay. Patients and caregivers should understand various pieces of information about their prescription. Which of the following is not one of them? Is it A, common side effects? B, what medications or food interacts with the medication? C, what to do if they miss a dose? Or D, when to pick up the prescription? I'll read it again. Patients and caregivers should understand various pieces of information about their script. So what are we talking about? The prescription. Which of the following is not one of them? We want them to know the common side effects. We want them to know what medication or food interact with the medication they're being prescribed or they're getting ready to take. We also want them to know what to do if they miss a dose. What we really don't care about is when to pick up the prescription, right? Uh, there's no right or wrong way to pick up a prescription, you know. Uh, when to pick up a patient's medication is not paramount to the patient. Uh, patients and caregivers should know the brain and generic names. They need to know what each medication looks like. They need to know what they're taking and why they're taking it, what they're taking and why they're taking it, what they're taking and why they're taking it. They need to know how much to take and when to take each medication. They need to know whether a medication replaces a medication they were already taking. They need to know precautions about the medicine, what to look out for. You know, how should this medicine affect me? How should I, how do I know, you know, if I'm having an allergic reaction, right? Uh, they need to know common side effects. You know, they need to know, don't take this medication with spinach, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and then they need to know what to do in case they miss a dose of medication. When I was on birth control years ago, um, or the pill form or whatever, you know, they would tell you, you know, if you miss the Medicaid, if you miss the dose, it's okay to double up that next day, right? Well, with an antibiotic, you may not need to double up, you know? Um, with, you know, missing anxiety medication, we don't want them to double up. You know, if they miss pain medication, we don't want them to double up on codeine, you know, and now you are looking at them, you know, overdosing. Um, but they need to know exactly what to expect um, and how they should go about getting that dose that they feel that they missed, okay? The metric system, when entering quantities into the pharmacy computer, which system should be used? Apoclary, Avor, Dupos, the best I can say it, household or metric? Look, I don't get paid to, pronounce everything correctly. I get paid to ensure that the patient and that every person that we're helping receives optimum care, right? Um, and I'll let my pharmacist pr pr you know, pronounce things the correct way. Um, 
And this answer is going to be the metric system. Everything should be entered into the system utilizing the metric system, okay? Write that down. If you did not know that, you need to write that down. If you did not know that, that's more the reason why you should be here with me in Houston. Reimburse the pharmacy, okay? This is what we want to talk about. Like, how does the pharmacy get reimbursed? Which of the following is a six-digit number used to identify the company that will reimburse the pharmacy for the prescription being filled? Is it the bin? Is it the group? Is it the ID? Or is it the plan code? A, B, C, or D? What would you say? The bin is a six digit number used to identify the company that will reimburse the pharmacy for the prescription being filled. The bin is the bank identification number. The word bank lets you already know that we are talking about money, money, money. Okay, so when you think about reimbursement, the answer is A and it's going to be the BIN, which is the bank identification number that reimburses the pharmacy for the prescription being filled. Third party payer, which documents do patients sign when they pick up a prescription covered by a third party payer? Is it the exempt narcotic book, the patient register book, the patient compliance book, or the signature law? Which one is it? It's going to be the signature log, okay? When the, when the patient signs to pick up their prescription that is covered by a third party payer is not exempt narcotic because it may not be a narcotic that they're receiving. It's not a registered book because the patient isn't registering for medication. And it's not a compliance book, okay? But it would be a signature log. Customers sign a log to record the prescription was picked up, okay? That is proof to the third-party payer that we're not just billing people in the pharmacy to get paid wherever we are, you know, and they're not picking it up, okay? Because if a patient doesn't pick up a prescription, we put it back on the shelf, we reverse the claim, and the insurance never gets charged. That's how it happens in pharmacy. You will notice that on this, in this particular, um, crash course today, or not even crash course, but in this particular video that I do for you guys every Wednesday, that we didn't cover any math. I want you to know that math is not everything. If you are busting your butt and busting your bomb, trying to cover math and know it but from the top of your head to the back of your head, you are ultimately stressing yourself out that's not necessary, okay? You need to know more than math to just pass this test, okay? I want you to text PASS to 74121 and register now for our two-day PASS seminar, okay? This seminar is gonna be held here in Houston, Texas, close to the Hobby Airport of area, okay? And we are going to be in a hotel. I have hotel rates for you all, my friend at the hotel has given us some great rates. And so if you are interested in coming and being a part, if you, you're like, okay, Lindsay, I'm coming, but I need somewhere to stay. I want you to go ahead and register. As soon as you register, I'm going to send you the link. It's a private exclusive link that I'm going to send to you once you register to book your hotel room at the hotel that we're going to be at, okay? When you register, that is when you will learn the location of the actual hotel. However, you will know that we will be in the Houston I Hobby Airport vicinity, okay? I got a lot of friends who are traveling again from different areas all over the country, and so I wanted to make sure that I was somewhere close where you guys could reach me, okay? The conference is going to start at 9 a.m., or the seminar, rather, will start at 9 a.m. and end at 5 p.m. We will break for lunch, okay? $400 is what the tickets cost. That's ultimately $200 a day. We're going to be learning eight hours a day. I mean, you can't beat that anywhere. All of your, in, all of your materials are going to be included or included in the $400 price because we are going to do some hands-on lab practices. Some of you guys have never stepped foot in the pharmacy. Some of you all have never done anything close to uh, simulating what is done in the pharmacy. And so we want to give you the opportunity to learn and understand and comprehend why rules are the way that they are. Um, the 
seminar is going to be hosted by Lindsay. Okay, this seminar is ideal for friends who have graduated from farm, from farm tech programs, but still don't feel comfortable, which is sad. Um, this is going to, you know, and, and it's not sad. Let me back it up. It's not sad that you don't feel comfortable. It's sad that you have invested time and money into a school that did not give you the support that you needed. Let me say that. So it's not sad that you don't feel comfortable. It's sad that you were not supported properly, which is why we're here to do that. Okay. And that's no shade, no tea towards anybody. That's just me being honest and transparent. Um, this is also for individuals who are studying to pass the EXCPT exam as well as the PTCB. EXCPT exam as well as the PTCB. This is for individuals who previously failed the PTCB and the EXCPT exam. I'm getting calls from people who are like, Lindsay, I cannot pass this test to save my life. And they are wasting, you know, $300, okay? You know, somebody made a comment to me and they said, $400, wow, that's pretty affordable. And I'm going like, yes, it is, you know, especially for your, for your education. You have to think, you know, if you've taken this test three times, you've already spent $400 on testing. You've already spent it. Um, if you've taken this test, you know, and you went to school, you spent the money already. Um, but take it, you know, this time with the confidence of passing. Uh, if you are a tech and trainee in Texas or wherever you may be, um, and your particular trainee license is getting ready to expire, this is something you definitely want to be a part of. Some of you guys have called me and like, hey, Lindsay, I got until March. I got until April to take this before my license expires. Come see your girl, okay? I'm going to be here in Houston holding it down H-Town, okay? Um, and anybody who is struggling with math and pharmacology, I get quite a few friends who are struggling with math. I want you to know, again, that math is not everything. However, you do need to know those calculations. You do need to know those formulas, okay? I told you, I'm bringing in my friends. I'm bringing in some reinforcement. I'm just going to be honest with you. I got friends that I'm telling you, they're coming in. They are experts at what they do. They're all technicians. I got a couple of friends who are pharmacists. You know who I'm planning on being there uh, to offer and show you guys some other things that you can do once you become certified. Um, and this is just going to give you an opportunity to be the best to ever do it. I told you, look, I've been holding down a career in pharmacy technician since 2007. And ever since I got in here, you know, I've been able to do things that other people couldn't do. I've been able to do things that people told me I wasn't going to be able to do. I've been able to operate in a career that I went to school for and got a certificate for than people who I know who went and got master degrees and who went and got four-year degrees and are working at the Gap in the mall because they can't find a job in their field or maybe working as a bartender because they can't find a job in their field. Again, this is no shade, no tea towards those individuals. I'm just telling you what Pharmacy Tech has done for me, what the certification has done for me and the door that, has, that it has opened um, and how I've been able to maintain and really have some stability when it comes to my career, okay? If you, you know, are struggling and you're like, Lindsay, look, I need some help, come see me. Text pass 74121 to register now. I am still going to be here for you every Wednesday to show you what you need to pave the way to help you get to where you need to be to reach those career goals. So that way you can be everything that you said you would be. Um, because remember, the goal is to, cre to create that generational wealth. We want to create generational wealth that when our kids' kids are here, they have somewhere to go and they know what to do and how to be successful, okay? And it starts here. It starts right now. I want you to know that everything that you've done up until this moment has prepared you for the opportunity to be successful in pharmacy. There is nothing that, that you cannot do, okay? There is nothing that can hold you back from being the best you that you can be except for you. If you are still walking around saying, I'm not good at math, I'm not good at remembering, I'm not good at memorizing, I'm not good at actually getting the stuff done, then what you're saying to yourself ultimately is that I'm no good. And that's what the brain is processing. I want you to turn those words around and I want you to say, I'm great 
at filling the prescriptions. I'm great at customer service. I'm great at learning new things. I'm good at applying myself to challenges. You got to start speaking that positivity over your head. For my friends who are going to be taking a test this week, remember the first 30 minutes of, of your test, I need you to build confidence. How do you build confidence? Thank you for asking. You build confidence by only answering the questions that you know within the first 30 minutes of taking your test. You give yourself 15 seconds to recognize that question. If that question and those multiple choice answers do not, rec if they're not recognizable and they don't resonate with you, mark it, flag it, keep it moving. And you repeat that process until you're done. Until you're done, okay? I don't care if there are only 30 questions that you recognize within the first 30 minutes, those are 30 questions that you know you got right. And then once you start feeling confident and you start feeling like your mojo, you're like, oh my God, here we go. And then everything else starts to look like, oh, I know that answer. Oh, I, I know it's not this answer. You see what I'm saying? And you keep that process going until you're done. Be great people, you know, make sure that you watch your time management. Make sure that you get done what you need to get done within the time that you have been given, okay? Because I'm getting calls saying, I ran out of time, Lindsay. I didn't know. I didn't know my time was this. So again, you got to make sure that you are staying on top of it, okay? Don't give up. Don't give out. Don't give in. Don't stop now, okay? You've come too far. There are too many people who have counted you out, and it is your job to prove them wrong. I love you for watching. I am so grateful that you have allowed me to be a part of your journey. I'm so glad that I can be a coach for you because when I was going through this and I was where you were or where you are right now, I didn't have a coach. I didn't have anybody telling me, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to study. I had to figure it out on my own. And like many of you, I went to a pharmacy technician school that didn't render a lot of support. And it took me being dedicated and committed to my studying in order to get to where I am now. I plan to share my story with you when you come in Houston, when you come to Houston, the February the 21st and the 22nd, I plan to be very transparent and to kind of give you a little bit more of me that I can't give you on YouTube. But when we're in person, I wanna be upfront and honest with you about where I am and where I've been and what I do and who I am um, and how pharmacy tech has played a major role in my success. Hopefully we can share stories with each other and get to know one another. And even when you leave, I want us to stay in contact and to remain friends because it matters about who we network with. Remember, there is no big I's and no little U's, okay? There's not one in team. Team is made up of many people who work together to get a job done. Teamwork, make the dream work. Continue to be who you are. May you have a productive week. May life continue to bless you abundantly. And I look forward to seeing you in Houston, February the 21st to the 22nd, so we can get to know each other a little better and be able to be friends even after you pass your test. Have a great week, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.